Hi, this is Irv Shapiro of the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to cover part two of a two part series on how to create interesting vases in a computer aided design program. And then what you need to do with your slicer to prepare them to print on your favorite 3D printer. In part one, we covered preparing these vases, creating these vases in FreeCAD using two different techniques. Now in part two, I'm going to teach you about some slicer features in both Prusa Slicer and Cura, and most importantly, about a hidden feature that will dramatically impact the speed of your prints. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Let's take a quick look at FreeCAD together and we'll look at the two vases or a couple of the different vases that I created in FreeCAD and very, very quickly review the techniques that were used. So I'm going to go to FreeCAD and click on open. And let's first look at how we created a vase with a revolution. You create a slice of a vase and you revolve it around an axis. We're going to open that up here. And you can see here, we have a nice looking vase, but it's completely solid. That's not a problem because our slicer will hollow it out for us. This vase consists of a sketch, a single sketch, and then a revolution. So if I turn on the sketch, you'll see the profile of the sketch here. And all I did was create that sketch and revolve it around an axis. And go back to part one of this series to learn how to do that. Now, let me close this one. And let me open another model. And this one is a loft we created. And I'm going to look at first this more complex loft just because it's quite interesting. And we'll zoom in here and let's move around so that we can see this. Once again, you'll see this is solid, but let's turn on the sketches. Now you'll see here that there are a whole bunch of sketches. And what this technique does is you correct, create each of these sketches and then you loft or you ask the computer aided design software to fill in between them. So as an example, if I was to take this sketch here, which is the third one, I called it top middle and double click on it. This one here. And if I was to change its size a little bit, let's make it Oops. Let's actually make it very big and see what happens. You'll see our vase completely changed because it's a series of sketches and it's lofted between them. So let's go back to that model there. And actually to make this easier to see, I'm going to turn off these other ones. Go back to this one and we'll make it a little smaller here and close it. And now it's different from this, but you can see how it was created. Now, how do I take these models and slice them? Because once again, right now they're solid. Well, let's take a look first at Prusa Slicer. Now in Prusa Slicer, we're going to take and do a file import of an STL and I'm going to look at the loft vase. That's a matter of fact, let's look at this one. Click open. And you can see here that it, we have a solid vase here. And if I just take and slice that and we take a look at this, 
we're going to see that it's printing a solid. You can see all the infill here. Let's zoom in so you can see the infill. That's not what this is. So how do you create this? Well, there's a technique called vase mode. The terminology used for each slicer is a little bit different. What it basically says is create a single outside wall, a single perimeter and ignore everything inside. So that means this is going to be fairly soft, flexible because it's one wall in width. So if I have a 4.4 millimeter nozzle, then in essence, the wall size is going to be right around 0.4 millimeters. And if I wanted to create a more solid model, I really need to use a larger nozzle. So I have a printer in my shop that has a one millimeter nozzle that I use for creating vases that are really solid. Because when you create a vase with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, very often it's not completely waterproof. And that's because there might be slight gaps in here. But with a one millimeter nozzle, I find they actually work very well. So how do you turn on this phase mode? Well, in Prusa Slicer, I'm going to go back to the model. Let's rotate this up here a little bit so we can see it. Move it down. And I'm going to go to Print Settings, Layers and Perimeters, and right here in the second section, it says Spiral Vase Mode. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to tell me that I really need to change a bunch of other parameters. I'm going to say, yes, change those all. Go back to my platter. Slice this, and the prior time that I sliced this, it was going to take like an hour and a half, two hours to print. Let's slice it now. And now... If we rotate this down, we'll see it's completely hollow. And that's because it's only printing that one perimeter, that one outside wall. And because of that, it's going to print much, much faster. So this is going to take about an hour. Okay, now that we've successfully sliced a model in Prusa, let's go to Cura and see how we would slice a model. So if we look at the screen, I'm going to open up that same model, the loft vase, and we can see it here. And now I'm just gonna say slice and see what happens. Wow, this would take over four hours to print and it's solid. It's not a hollow model. Well, we know how to fix that. And the way you fix it in Cura is you go to special mode, spiralize outer contour. Now you'll only see spiralize outer contour if you have one of the advanced settings selected. So if you click on this hamburger menu, if you're in basic mode, you won't see that. But you're, if you're an advanced expert or all, then you will be able to see that. Now, let's go ahead and slice it again. See how long it'll take. So uh, an hour and 25 minutes. Now that's longer than the Prusa. Now, the Prusa in general is faster when printing complex models because it has to do very short retractions because it's a direct extruder printer. Whereas a Bowden style printer like the Ender 3 has to do much longer retractions. Those take time. But this is going to print like this all the way up. If we actually watch it, we'll see this is just going around the model. There are no retractions. It's a single spiral. So what's causing that? What ends up in most slicers, there's a minimum layer time in order to allow for cooling. Since this is a very simple model, we really don't need as much time. So if we go to the cooling section and we see here minimum layer time, let's 
Drop that to five seconds and see what happens. We just dropped a third of the time off from basically an hour and a half down to an hour. So the spiralized setting or in either Prusa or Cura, which go by different names. So here, once again, it's spiralized outer contour in Cura. If we go back to our Prusa slicer, it's under print settings and it's called spiral vase mode. That will cause your print to just keep going around and only print an outer perimeter wall. But you won't get all the speed you could get unless you check your cooling settings and make sure you don't have a minimum time. Well, folks, I hope you found this interesting. Make sure you go back to the first video and learn how to create this in FreeCAD. Then you can use the vase mode in the Prusa slicer, or the spiralized mode in Cura. Make sure you check the minimum layer time and enjoy printing wonderful vases. If you want them to be thicker, the simplest approach is to use a larger nozzle. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, recommend it to your friends. If you want to talk about it, go to forum.drvax.com. It's a free discussion group for all of my viewers. Thanks again, and let's continue to learn things together.